Hey, and welcome to Matt and Jess TV. I am Matt Roast here with Jessica Von Von. This is our preview for House of the Dragon Season 2, Episode 7. This is the penultimate episode of the season. There's only one more coming afterwards. Everything is about to get crazy. I fully believe that. We have more dragons. We have more dragon riders. What's not to like? Also, we're going to talk about a tinfoil hat theory that I have yeah. involving Allison. After watching this trailer, I'm feeling more and more convinced that she is going to be leaving King's Landing and joining Team Rhaenyra. I mean, she has for a very long time been whatever is for the crown whoever the crown is she's loyal to the crown she grew up obviously in king's landing her dad is the hand of the king served three kings her whole life has about been serving the king and serving king's landing now that she has been kicked off the council by yeah. Aemond and she's you know basically you're you're not serving the king anymore she's really lost because that is what her whole life has been about out to the point that she's even marrying the king as a child still that she is here to serve the king but if she's not doing that anymore she feels lost and we see this in the trail she's just kind of wandering around where it looks like she's not in king's landing anymore could she be on her way to see Renera, where it's like okay I've created these monsters in my children who have now kicked me out of everything I don't want to I don't want to win this way. I don't want to serve my sons as king if my sons are monsters. I want to serve the kingdom the best way that I can, and that is with Rhaenyra. That's where I think this is going. Girls get it done, as they say <laughs> over on The Boys. Listen, Allison. We're going to have Allison, Rhaenyra, White Worm. Let's go. We welcome you to team black with open arms we will get together a decorative fruit platter for when you show up you will be that's so nice we are, we are very accommodating on team black mostly because we don't really have a lot of people and we're kind of screwed and we have damon just chilling in heron hall listen i really like allison i think allison is smart i think allison would actually be a good addition to the Team Black Council, which is basically filled with a bunch of schmucks other than Rhaenyra, who don't seem <laughs> to be listening to her. I, at least I feel like Alicent will listen to Rhaenyra. I think they would get along well. It's it's a fascinating, I think, discussion to have, and we'll have it more in this video as we go along, because the idea of Alicent going away from Team Green potentially is so risky and so fraught and there could be a lot of really really dire consequences however it is also so innately fascinating and it's just so worth breaking down further mm -hmm. but before we do hit that subscribe button we have a review up here at the channel for episode six we have more reviews and previews coming the rest of this House of the Dragon season, which I hope is just going to keep getting better. Also, follow us over on our Patreon. We'll have a link for you below. For just $5 a month, you're able to help support Matt and I here at the channel. And you'll be able to vote in polls on some different shows that we will be covering here at the channel, as well as extra shows that we cover only on our Patreon. Thank you so much to everyone who has joined. Okay. Thank you, guys. Let's get into the Allison talk, because if she is deciding that she's like, man, I created a real mess over here. I believed what Viserys said just to be true, that our son Aegon was the heir to the throne. I put him on the throne. I've spoken to Rhaenyra. I know that there was a misunderstanding. Now Aegon's not on the throne. And now we have Aemon and she thinks that he's, you know, running the kingdom into the ground, which personally I actually don't agree with. I think he is doing the best that he can. He's doing better than Aegon was doing. But that aside, she doesn't feel that way because she's been kicked off the small council and now she's yeah. upset. Um, but I think the biggest takeaway from this trailer is that she's like, I need to be able to serve the kingdom. And if I can't serve the king, then what am I and where do I belong? She is really lost now. So I really could see her going over to work with Renera. Renera is somebody that they've been, they were friends for a really long time. She had Renera's back. 
as Renera being the heir. She's told off her father about it. She's told off yeah. a lot of people that are like, no, no, it has to be a man. And she has said, no, it's Renera all the way to that last dinner where she's like, you are going to make a fine queen. And the only reason she changed her mind is because she thought Viserys did. And her loyalty is to the king and whatever he says is gold but now that she knows that that's not the case aemon is not who she thought he yeah. was going to turn out to be could she be with renera and would renera even take her in after everything i think it's all really really complicated but i think that's a part of what makes this idea so juicy and interesting <laughs> is that allison i think more than anything else she wants Peace. Like she was very effective in a time of peace serving alongside Viserys. And I yep. think that's something that she would like to strive towards. Like I can't see her going to Team Black with these aspirations of just having constant chaos and, you know, all these different battles that are being staged throughout the Seven Kingdoms. But I could see her going there with this idea of, okay, I think I know how we can start to try to work some things out. I think she's maybe a little bit delusional if she thinks that there's going to be a way to solve this that does not involve a lot more chaos because it just seems like that's inevitable at this point. But I do think she could supply some important wisdom to Rhaenyra or at least give her more of a tactical advantage than she would have otherwise. And I think at the very least, these are things that Allison is probably entertaining at this point because she wants to have a role. She wants to have the say. Like, she doesn't want to just have domestic duties. I think her being out of seemingly King's Landing in this promo, like, regardless of whatever the reason is for it, this is a clear defiance against everything that she has been told. She does not want to just go along with what, you know, her own son is ordering her to do. Yeah. Eamon may think that he's right, and he may be right in a couple of different things, but that doesn't mean that Allison wants to listen to him. It doesn't mean that she thinks that this is right for her. She has her own sort of self-determination. It was actually really interesting seeing her out on her own in this promo because in this last episode we saw that she was getting attacked by the townsfolk. People are hungry and angry, and how how was she able to kind of navigate through all this to be able to actually get somewhere where she's not being attacked or talked to, or she's by her, you know, she's by herself. She's royalty. Like how yeah. is this happening? It's a really tricky position because I think she knows what matters the most when it comes to being a ruler, but how do you navigate that in a time in which you have a million other things to worry about? Like, you can't just think about the small folk. You can't just think about how are we going to deal with Team Black. You have to sort of think of all of these different things at once. And I think she's going to try to broker something that gets her closer to a goal of peace within this episode. It's just, do I think it's going to work? No, and a part of that is mostly just stemming from, it seems based on a lot of interviews that we're not necessarily going to have Brooks Rest 2.0 this season, but that we're going to have some sort of equivalent of that before the season is over. And maybe that's the finale, maybe that's not in this episode, but I think Allison's story to me is one of the most interesting, just because I think she's interesting. Like, I really like her as a character, and I think everything she has gone through this season, which also includes you know, Kristen Cole not caring about her anymore at all. I mean, it's probably a mistake for you, Allison, that you ever thought he really did. He's a jerk. But she's just been cast aside by so many different people that she's going to be desperate. Yeah, and it's good to see her trying to take some sort of control over herself and over her life. Like, this was something that Renice said last season where she was basically like, you have put yourself in a box and you've been put in a box by other people, by all these men around you, that you have this little window that you look through to be able to serve, you know, the king, serve your father, serve your sons. Where's serving yourself? And maybe this is where she's finally going to do that now that everyone has just cast her aside. She doesn't really have a place. Now it is time to figure it out. And I think a lot of that is why she was hooking up with Kristen Cole, that it was something she was trying to figure out for herself. She didn't 
choose to be with Viserys. That was chosen for her at like 14. Mm -hmm. This is her first time being kind of on her own and not really knowing what to do. Yeah, I think she's still trying to figure out where she fits in life, where she fits in Team Green or potentially <laughs> Team Black. Because regardless of whatever Allison decides, here are some words that I have not said very much in these videos. Good news for Team Black. Okay, so Adam of Hull, it's got sea smoke. Yep. Like, it's abundantly clear <laughs> after watching the preview, if it was not clear already after this past episode, and I think it was, that Rhaenyra is going to meet up with him, and I think she's going to have some questions, but I think whether it's the end of this promo where she sort of promises the dragons are going to bring everyone peace, or just where we know that Adam sort of sits within the chessboard of Westeros, that he's going to be on Rhaenyra's side here. Could he have his own stipulations? Sure, but I think he, he wants to find value. Like, that's a big motivation for that character. He didn't really feel like he fit in in the Valarian world necessarily, but now he's got a dragon. He's got an element of power. I think he's a smart guy. I'm, I'm really excited to see where he fits in. Yeah, he's really trying to figure out where he fits in. He wants to have some sort of a footing instead of sort of being this like quiet side kid and doesn't really want that type of a lifestyle. He really wants to make a name for himself. And now that he's riding around on sea smoke and he's standing in front of the queen, it's, it's going to be an interesting conversation where what is he going to share with her? We had this big scene in the promo of them on the beach with their dragons. She's like, who are you? Like, how are you riding this dragon? What is his answer going to be? Yeah. How much is he really going to share? Because he hasn't really shared much of anything. He's been living in the shadows, kind of pretending he's a nobody. And, and that's what he's been doing. But now he's riding around on sea smoke. Yeah. You can't really hide that. So how much does he share? I I hope we get a good bit. I hope that their scene takes a little bit of time because there's still a lot we don't know, I think, about Adam as a character and what motivates him. They've kind of given us little tastes throughout this season, but yeah. we haven't gotten to the spot where we're getting the full meal. And if we're going to talk more about dragons here, apparently it seems as though Daron, who has just been off in Old Town for the entirety of this series and barely even mentioned, you know. The it, happy loot player. The happy loot player. That he may have to trade in his loot for riding a dragon because it seems like we're getting to that point. But I think this promo may be a tad misleading because I have not seen any indication that they have actually cast anyone as Daron. I don't think we're going to see Daron this season. I just think Team Green is thinking a little bit about this as, okay, here's something we may be able to play. Because in reality, you know, getting somebody on board a dragon and having them be prepared to go out there and fight, it shouldn't be anywhere as easy as what it apparently seems to be for Adam of Hull, who can just hop on board, yes. see smoke, and everything is great. Don't I'm not mad about this by any means, but it is just kind of magical that they've got everything worked out. Yeah, I mean, is it that Eamon is calling his brother to take wing to come help them? I mean, Vigar, she can't do it all. She can do a lot. She's yeah. big and old and ready to just take on the world. But, you know, there is sort of a safety in numbers. Like, she can only do so much. So with the other side starting to gather more and more dragons, are we over here on Team Green where Eamon is like... Listen, brother, you need to get on your dragon and you need to come and help us out. I think Otherwise, why are you putting down the loot? It's it's tough because it's just Team Green, you guys need to figure something out here at this point because yes, I guess you can claim that you achieved a great success at Rook's Rest, but at the same time, look at what happened here to Aegon. You know that Team Black, their strength is really in dragons, so you must be like, oh, we're going to fight dragons with dragons, but we're going to yeah. use happy loop player and dragon who may not be ready for prime time. That's the biggest 
question I've had with this. Like, Rhaenyra wants to get more dragon riders. Okay, yeah. great. But they're not experienced dragon riders. You got Adam flying around being like, I had no idea this was happening. <laughs> and I, I don't know what is happening to me. Now, all of a sudden, I'm riding around on this dragon. It's yeah. one thing to be riding a dragon. It's another thing to be in battle riding a dragon. You're he's inexperienced and then over here you have the happy loot player it's like okay yeah he, he can be riding around on his dragon but is he ready to go to battle what's he gonna bard them to death <laughs> there are certain fantasy rpgs where you can cast little spells out of your loot I that's don't think... right life is bard okay all right okay <laughs> now the here's the two big questions i have going into this episode i mean number one are we actually going to see some movement with Ulf the White, who has just been... it? He was fun the first time we saw him. Now I'm just like, okay, can we get this show on the road? I feel like he's going to end up being a dragon rider, but I don't know if we need a four to five episode origin story on how Ulf ends up being on a dragon. You guys took care of this way faster with Adam, and it ended up being fine. Like, Ulf is not a... A tier character that I don't no. think we're going to be spending the rest of the show on. Like, you don't, he does not need to have a similar amount of time to say, mm -hmm. I don't know, a Jace or a Bela, like these characters who I'm a little bit more invested in. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how he ends up with a dragon anyways. He's he's kind of locked in at King's Landing at this point anyways. Is he really going to end up being one of the dragon riders? I don't know. But it would be interesting because he doesn't seem like he's all good or all bad. I mean, we saw him like, it, it's a desperate situation, but like grabbing food from other people, like it's yeah. pretty desperate. So that's what happens. But at the same time, do you want this person riding a dragon for you? Or are they going to turn on you? I mean, it's hard to know. This is why I think the most interesting part of this next episode, besides the owls and stuff, obviously, yeah. is where does Adam stand? Like, yeah, he's riding this dragon, but what can Renera really do about it? <laughs> she may have to, I don't know, you may have to promise him something. And I know the amount of Team Black promises may be starting to go thin because Jace basically promised everything in the world to the phrase <laughs> earlier this season. I know. But you still, you still got to figure out a little bit of something here. Now, here is the other question. Are we finally going to get Damon out of Harrenhal Hall and move? I, this is going to be the episode. I'm calling it now. This is when the episode happens where Damon finally goes back and joins Rhaenyra at Dragonstone and they're able to make some sort of forward movement. I don't, it, it's a hard thing to know exactly how this happens though, because it's, the Tullys aren't going to be the catalyst for this. Like, do we really care about the Tullys making some sort of big emotional move with him? Yeah, I, I don't really care about the Tullys, uh, except that they could be the people that get him out of this castle and leave like i've never made it a secret that i'm not really the biggest fan of this storyline i feel like it could have been still told i understand it's an important storyline to be told but it didn't need six or seven episodes to be told it could have been done in a shorter amount of time to get to this point where now he's having conversations with the tullys and things are starting to come together could he then bring this group back to Renera? I just don't know. He's not, he seems to be at this point now that he's not even really talking about going back anymore. Someone's going to have to go there and really convince him. Yeah. And this is the biggest problem I have with it right now is I don't know who that is. And I don't know how they end up doing it because Alice, no matter what her motivation is, like she's dug in really, really deep. She absolutely we, has. <laughs> yeah. Like she's really got Damon sort of just like puppeting around at this point. And it's going to take somebody who's really influential to get him to sort of realize, okay, I can't, even if I want to be King, I can't just be King sitting around in Heron hall. I have one dragon. That's not going to cut it. I don't, <laughs> Yes, I know Jace was able to convince the phrase. I don't know if Jace is going to be able to do anything here. I certainly don't buy into the idea of the Tullys being able to do something here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, I, I need resolution to this. I need it now because I just want the two sides really going at each other, even if these two sides are very messy at the same time, such as 
Eamon and Aegon potentially trying to take each other out by the end of this season, which I also think is going to happen. Yeah, I think I think it could. I mean, it's going to depend. If Aegon starts to get stronger again, I feel like Eamon's going to take another shot. I'm really excited for where these next couple of episodes go. There is a lot of potential. Please, guys, don't don't let us down. And also, resolve the Damon thing. We're done with it. We're ready to move on. Okay, yeah. that's what we got entering House of the Dragon Season 2 episode seven so be sure to hit that subscribe button so you guys don't miss any of the upcoming reviews thank you to our patrons thank as well you. for your support for five dollars you can help us continue to do these videos that we love check out that link in the description and we'll see you here next time